Hi, I'm Kate and I make junk journals and this is episode three of our five panel fold out series and we're making this page. So this is part three of a project and if you haven't watched that, then the description for the first episode is in the link below and you can start from the first part. Or if you wanna just see what we're doing today and use it for inspiration, you can totally do this in any junk journal so you don't need to start from the beginning and you can craft along with me. You can use any pages or paper or style that you want. These are just general concepts that will hopefully inspire your crafting. So we're using a video from one of my flip throughs of another journal that I made as a reference for this tutorial. So let's go ahead and just look at the clip with today's panel. actually super simple so let's get started so here's the page that we've been working on and we're gonna open it up and do this panel today and all it is is a little paper folded up like a matchbook and a tag in it and then we're gonna stick a little pocket and tag on the paper that folds out so the paper that I'm gonna use is gonna be something that I can write on again you can use any paper and do any style but this is just what I'm gonna do to have plenty of writing space so I have like big office kind of like ledger paper things um, this big which is really nice because then you can fold it out a little bit more um, but if you want to do something standard this is just from a notebook I haven't measured it but it's it looks pretty close to the standard eight and a half by eleven it might be a tiny bit different you can use any size of paper but the paper length will kind of dictate how much you can fold it out so I'm gonna go ahead and use this longer paper and I'm going to trim it to be the height that I want so in that flip through video that we just kind of watched, the paper takes up the majority of the space and then we just put a tag um, below it. But you can do this piece of paper as tall or as short as you want. So you can cut a big strip and have this take up the majority of the paper or you can do it really small and then you can see the tag a little bit more clearly or you can add more stuff on the top. So I'm going to do it a little bit lower than is in the video and do it a little bit taller than halfway. And then I'm going to want just a little bit of space on the bottom. So I'll cut it about right there. And I'm just going to use my scissors because my paper slicer only goes to about 12 inches and this is longer than 12 inches. But luckily I have a line that I can just follow so it makes it nice and easy. Okay, so now I have this long strip and in order to make that matchbook tuck, um, I'm just going to fold over the tip of that and then I'm just going to grab some washi tape and I'm going to put it um, almost to the edge of that and then fold it over on either side. And then this is going to create a little pocket spot where I can fold the end of my paper in and it will kind of hold it close. But we're going to get to that in a minute because we've got to fold this first. So now as I decide where I want my fold lines to be, I'm going to want this first crease um, to just make sure it's a little bit away from the edge. So somewhere right there. And I'm just going to take my scoreboard and kind of find where that line is. Make a little fold mark and we'll help crease that down right there. And then for this next crease mark, I'm gonna wanna make sure it matches up to where it goes past this edge, but I don't want it too long to where it won't fit in that tuck. So I'm gonna just kinda measure somewhere like right there is good. And we'll just make a little fold line. And then for this last one, I can choose uh, whether I want to fold this in a little bit um, and have one more like tiny little fold or if I want to just cut it and I think I just want to cut it and keep it clean three panels so I'm gonna go ahead and slice it to where um, that this panel is a little bit smaller um, than this one so I'll just look at that crease that I made and kind of go back a little ways and cut it about there and then that should nest together just like that and let's see if this fits here. Sometimes if I don't cut it very straight, um, it can actually be like larger on the end than it is at this end. So theoretically that should fit in there just fine. 
it is a little bit of a tight squeeze and you can see that I kind of cut it closer there and it kind of bumps out other areas. So I'm just gonna kind of smooth that out um, and make sure that the areas folding in are a little bit narrower than this part. Let's see if that fits a little better. There we go, that fits really nicely. So then the idea is that that just tucks in there and then it folds out. So we're just going to glue this on like a pocket by gluing these three sides. I'm gonna use my Beacon 3-in-1 glue for this. Okay, and then we'll just make sure there's a little bit of a border on the bottom and on each edge and kind of press that down. And I'll open this and press it down to kind of help it be smooth. Okay, now if you had a smaller paper, you could totally just have it open the one time and that would be totally great. And if you have something longer, you can keep folding out as long as you want. But on the last panel, we're gonna go ahead and make a little tuck spot. And in the tutorial, I just did a little corner that didn't open up, you couldn't write on it, it was nothing fancy. But since I'm always kind of looking to upgrade, we're gonna do it a little bit differently and make it fold open to make even more writing space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, just it's a blank book page, and I'm gonna cut it to make a square. Um, and let's make the square about, oh, let's try two and a half inches. And then once I have that square cut out, I can just fold it in half um, from the corner to the corner, kind of in a diagonal way. I'll go ahead and push that down. And then that way, when we glue this in the corner, um, we can also open it up and have more writing space so we can write on the top or on the inside as well. So I'm just gonna glue these two edges to make a tuck. And then I just want a teeny tiny border hardly any border at all. I just like it to not go over the edge. So we'll put it almost to the very edge. Just press that down. And then I'm just gonna grab um, a little tag. Let's see, one of these might work. I kinda like this. We'll see if that fits. And that just might be a tiny bit too tall. So I'm just gonna trim a little bit off the top of that so it fits a little nicer. And I'll grab my corner rounder just to kind of make sure that that looks consistent since I just chopped off those edges. There we go. And now when we're folding this open, we will be surprised by another little card and then this little pocket that also you can write in there. So I love it when there's like lots of little surprises, especially like kind of deep into the pocket. But this is looking pretty blank and so I definitely think it needs something. Maybe a little bit more color. Let's see what I have or maybe not color, maybe that is actually cute, I like that. Um, and part of me kind of wants to collage something so that it's a little more interesting, but I also really like the idea of writing a little note right there. And since uh, this journal is intended for me to write in, I think I'm just gonna keep it simple with one thing. And as I go through to write in this, I can always kind of add color by using some pens, or maybe I can add a collage later if I don't have anything to say in such a small writing space. But yeah, I like that, that's cute. Okay, so let's tuck that all back in. That should nest nicely in there. And then all we have to do is put a card in this pocket. I was thinking one of these scrapbook papers might be nice. Probably this one, because we have a lot of kind of more muted tones and we needed something a little bit more bright and happy. So I'm just gonna mark the top of this and we'll probably have it about that tall. And to turn this into more of a tag, sometimes I use these little lines and I, um, turn it into a tag using you know the correct angle and then other times I just kind of grab some scissors and uh, make a snip and then I will take this and then just line it up on the other side um, just put it backwards so that it, they kind of mirror each other and then just kind of do something similar on that side and it's not perfect but it looks good to me and then I can stick that right back there so this is what I did in the tutorial, and you can totally just stop here and do that. But something else that I've been doing whenever I have this kind of a setup where there is um, a tag and some space behind it that's blank, I've been adding this other layer that I think is really fun. So I wanna show you that too. So this is really great as is, or you can get another piece of writing paper, and I'm going to measure it to be a little bit smaller than uh, the page. So leaving a little border right here and then coming a little bit and I'll cut it about there all the way up. 
So now I'm just going to make sure that the bottom of this does not touch this bottom pocket, um, but there's going to be a little gap between. And then I'm going to fold so that there's just a tiny little border up there. So let's fold that down. And then in order to get this to nest really nice, I'm going to fold this backwards this way, just a little bit shorter than the one on the bottom so that the bottom page kind of peeks out a tiny bit. And then I'm going to reverse this fold. So fold it back this other way now that I have that kind of marked. And then I'm going to do the same thing and just see where that crease is and just kind of fold this next one a little bit smaller and shorter than that. And then I'll reverse that fold as well. And the reason I do it this way is so that it will nest really well together. If I just fold it, sometimes that kind of works, but it starts to kind of be bulgy. And I really want to make sure that each panel gets smaller and smaller to give space. Okay, so when we're done, it should just kind of roll up. And you can see that there's lots of room in there and it will fold really flat that way. So it looks like I kind of gave myself some extra room on that first fold. So I'm actually going to trim that down. And that'll work to my advantage because I just thought while we're gluing something back here, we should probably turn this into a pocket and not just glue it flat. So if we make that a little more narrow, we can put more room on the top anyway. So I'm going to glue the bottom panel. Um, just in these three spots to create that top pocket. And what's cool about this is when this is on, um, you know, this can't flap open because this tag is going to be pinning it back. So I really like these because it adds more layer. It kind of evens out the page and it's kind of interactive because then that's going to hold everything back and there's just lots and lots of layers. So I'll just take this and kind of Make sure that there's a gap between both of my pockets, leaving a little bit of room on top. Okay, so now we can put that there. And that'll all kind of just sit nice together. And now let's just find a little tiny tag or paper or something to put kind of behind everything. And I have this little tag that will just kind of stick back there that will poke up like that. So, here is the page. We have this fold-out matchbook with a tag and a little opening tuck that all fits nice there. We can pull out this tag and write on it and then that folds up a million times and then we have a little pocket up there. So this is really nice and utilizes lots of space and it's a pretty even page which is nice because this page behind it is a little bit even too so those feel really nice and we don't have too much bulk accumulating in one area. So there you have it. It's super simple but it is very interactive and layered and looks pretty complex so I really love this page. Thanks so much for crafting with me today. If you make anything for my tutorials, I would love to see it. Please tag me on Instagram at at Kate's Junk Journals. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on your notifications, and comment. I love all your comments. Thank you so much. And please feel free to ask me any questions. And speaking of questions, it's time for a little Q&A. Suzette Faircloth asked me, how do you make the edges of your signature stay even? Because when you fold them and stack them onto each other, the middle layers poke up taller than the surrounding areas. And all I do is kind of think of that um, beforehand and make my outer papers a little bit longer than my inside papers. If you don't layer very much and there's not very much bulk, then the difference isn't going to be that extreme. But when you make a really layered page, like the five panel page that we're making today, it's really going to be a lot for surrounding pages to go around it in your book. So sometimes I kind of pre-plan which ones are gonna be the middle panels and which ones are gonna be out. And as I make the big thick layered ones, I put them different sizes and I make sure that they stay in their spot. But sometimes I just make the big thick layered ones just the similar sizes 
and then when I put blank papers in between them to fill out the journal, then I will kind of look and measure and make those ones kind of staggered and longer. Because it really depends on whether you want all the pages of your signatures to line up beautifully or whether you care if they're kind of like jagged and some of them are a little bit longer and some of them are a little bit shorter. So I do agree when they're all the same size, um, they kind of you know start to peak in the middle. That doesn't look so good. So even if you just put a few pages on the outside pages that are a little bit longer to make it look more of a varied edge than a sloping toward the center edge, I think that looks a lot better. So hopefully that makes sense, but those are kind of the different ways I navigate that. Either pre-think about it and make your outside ones longer, or when you're compiling your whole book, just kind of make sure it's staggered so that it's not just peaking. If you like to put your pages together and sew them in before you start decorating them, then you can just line them all up and chop them at the same time and then that will get the edges really exact. But if you're like me and you like decorating all your pages first, then you just gotta fly by the seat of your pants a little bit more and work with what you made. So hopefully that makes sense and kinda helps you out as you're trying to navigate that. Thanks again for hanging out with me, you guys, and I'll see you next week.